Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into NB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, another police chase ends in a shootout. A look at the startling way some criminals smuggle weapons into courthouses. A man is outraged after urban renewal tears down his home. And another stellar performance for the Bahamas at the Junior World Championships. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney, and NB12 starts right now. A man is in hospital tonight after being pursued by police on the Capitol this afternoon. Juan McCartney was on the scene of this latest police shooting. Here's his report. Police say this chase and success for them, but some residents here at Florida Court say that police acted unprofessionally and were too aggressive in taking these suspects down. Superintendent in charge of the Grove Police Station, Philip Don Wilson, said the chase began around 3.15 this afternoon when officers were on patrol in the vicinity of the Bamboo Shack restaurant on Blue Hill Road. He said officers saw a suspicious-looking vehicle that was heavily tinted. The officers attempted to stop the vehicle, which sped off. Police gave chase throughout the Grove and Englishton areas. Wilson said about 20 minutes later, the chase ended in Florida court. Where one of the culprits was success, successfully got away, and the other attempted to take on police officers. We, there are reports that gunshots were fired and officers returned fire. Thus, a young man was subsequently hit and is presently at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Wilson said the man who left the scene conscious was hit in the upper armpit area. Wilson said attempts to attack the police will be dealt with accordingly. I wish to send out a clear warning to young men in particular throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, who seems to now be taking on some sort of courage in confronting police officers. All law enforcement unity or all law enforcement agencies um, regards this as serious and it would be met with the strongest resistance. Um, by in, and indeed all law-abiding citizens. And so my advice to young men in particular, when police officers signal you to stop, it will be in your best interest to stop. However, these Florida court residents were less than pleased with the police response. They claim the yard where the man was shot was filled with children. I was sitting inside but where my auntie lived. And we had a shot. So when we had a shot, I see the suspect who ran out the car. When he ran out the car, the officer came shooting the shot, and my cousin was to the door. I had to tell everybody in the house to get low, because the police just came shooting out of nowhere. We have a million children who is being in this yard. We don't care if it's officer shoot at nobody. See, that's the lady right there who's in the door when the shot's going off. If I they shoot, she could have gotten shot. We don't mind that they get a suspect. We just didn't like how they go about doing it. The next officer say, he ain't dead, he ain't dead. I told him to be in dead, he always in problem, that's a lie. They are untrained and unprofessional. They need some more training, and I'll speak to Commissioner on this. Wilson admitted that Florida court is a challenging area for police. As you can hear the noises that is coming, that, that is coming from that area, obviously they are, they are relative to the young man that was shot by the police. And so um, we expect this sort of reaction whenever someone in this area has been shot by the police. And so no, um, that doesn't move me. Um, it is not no concern in that I'm fully aware that the members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force are professionals and uh, they are fully aware of the rules governing the justifiable force and harm policies. It was unclear if the weapon the suspect who was shot reportedly used was recovered up to news time. Reporting for NB12, I'm Juan McCartney. 
Well, the government and the Royal Bahamas Police Force have been praising the success of Urban Renewal 2.0 since it was launched June 4th. And while many residents agree that crime fighting initiative is making a difference, others claim that officers and urban renewal workers need to be more thorough. Nakia DeVoe has the story of a man who claims his house was demolished without warning. You'll see this story on Just One Station. A tractor was on Palmetto Street today, clearing up what was left of a home that Keith Moss says he lived in. He claims that Urban Renewal tore down the home while he was at work yesterday. One the reason bringing my house down and very awkward for, for um, help. Nobody knew how to help me. They didn't come to me from Urban Renewal and say nothing. All I know my boss was dropping some work at home. I didn't leave me at the office. I had to leave the office unsecure. Because my boss called me and sent me for this. The Ministry of Works employee told us that the house belonged to his grandmother and he lived there all his life. Ma said he had recently boarded up the windows to prevent people from breaking in. He told us that he will now have to stay with his sister because he no longer has a home. But according to officers attached to the Bain and Grantstown Urban Renewal Project, they canvassed the area last week. And based on their research, the structure was abandoned and unlivable. Residents reported that you know, drug peddlers going in and out, hiding, stashing um, illegal uh, weapons, stashing dangerous drugs. This urban renewal project wasted no time. We took the necessary action, documented the concerns of the residents, forwarded it to the relevant authorities, and here we are today. This was a rat-infested, rodent-infested area, house that was mainly being used by rodents and drug peddlers hiding stuff. And this was being monitored for quite some time. And this was authorized by us to be just demolished. What is the process of um, making sure that a house is abandoned? We check the house first properly, like the officer said. We canvass the area to make sure who may own it or who may be living in it. If there's vagrants in it, we know that they shouldn't be in it. The person is not the owner. If it's not livable, because of health reasons, we will make sure it is demolished. Officer in charge of Baines and Grantstown Urban Renewal Inspector Roderick McKenzie says there was no electricity or running water in the building, but water could be seen gushing from the debris. Moss said he lost thousands of dollars. I buy a new fridge, put inside there, and then the police to give me one from downtown. I put it inside there in the bedroom. And TV has been, TV was there, other things have been. As we interviewed Ma, some residents in the area shouted that he does not live in the house, but others claim that he does. Palmetto Street resident Anthony Kerr says they rarely see Moss in the neighborhood. He hasn't had anything inside there for years. He hasn't been there for years because there's no place to live. That's the reason he left there, because you couldn't live in the house if it rained. The whole place soaking wet, the water running all out, nothing, no pump running, no electricity, nothing, no phone connected. That's not a home. That's all that was is having, rat and roaches. That's infested, old, breakdown home. What was a home? Because it was in the home like, for the past couple of years. Inspector McKenzie said that if Moss can prove that he did indeed live in the home when it was demolished, that social services will assist him and they will help him to find somewhere else to live. Reporting for NB12, I'm Nikia DeVoe. Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson and Minister of State for Legal Affairs Damian Gomez toured the new magistrate's court complex on South Street today to see firsthand how magistrates are settling into the state-of-the-art building. However, they were shocked to discover boxes filled with hundreds of weapons that suspects and visitors have allegedly tried to sneak into the multi-million dollar facility. Here's Vonnie Toot. With the help of full body and portable scanners, police officials have confiscated more than 1,500 weapons from people visiting the new magistrate's court complex, as well as suspects waiting to make court appearances. Now, you'd be very surprised to know where officials discovered some of these items. In some cases, knives, screwdrivers, and scissors were found in women's handbags. However, they say this turkey bone was found in someone's body part. We have to be very careful because we found um, knives like this in the part of the bodies and stuff. So, um, and we also find, you know, we, we, <laughs> we also find um, scissors and stuff 
wrap up in tissue. And we can't take nothing for granted, especially checking prisoners who come down and those who come off the stations. And bear in mind that the prison, the prison that we collect all prisoners, those from Fox Hill and those who come from the various stations. Head of security at the South Street Court Complex, Superintendent Oscar Sand, says one or two people have been charged for trying to smuggle dangerous weapons into the building. He says a number of women who were found with small knives and rat tail combs in their bags insisted that they forgot the items were in there. Sand says he is happy officers were able to prevent people from sneaking weapons into the facility, in spite of the security flaws that exist within the multi-million dollar court complex. The chief of security explained that the metal doors at the entrance often cause the full body scanners to malfunction, forcing officers to use handheld scanners. That's not his only concern. Security area for boat victim, um, persons who um, um, who come to court, witnesses, accused, family, all sit in this open forum here. Let's say um, an incident happened. Um, the danger of it is if we as police officers don't um, proper search people here, a family member could sit here with a scissors, a what they call a rock tail comb, and a, and a person who go to, to, the, to the court and be attacked by a family member. Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson says she was not informed of some of these issues until she and State Minister for Legal Affairs Damian Gomez toured the magistrate's court complex this morning. For all persons who are found with weapons uh, entering into court facilities, whether it be here or anywhere else, will be quickly prosecuted and we will see major terms of imprisonment because this is a, an assault on the court system. We are very serious about assuring that everybody who is in the precincts of this building should know that they are in a sterile environment where law and order are paramount. The AG says steps will be taken to separate witnesses and accused persons waiting to appear in court. As for the metal doors and malfunctioning scanners, Chief Architect at the Ministry of Works Livingston Forbes says they are awaiting cabinet approval to change those doors. We intend to put in a mahogany door um, closer to the entrance. We're going to re-fix uh, this door and make it more uh, functional as relates to the overall security facility. The Attorney General says her office is working with police and Ministry of Works officials to ensure that all of these security concerns are addressed as soon as possible. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonik Tude. In other news tonight, police on Grand Bahama are investigating two murders that have pushed the country's murder count to 74 for the year. The first incident happened at around 9.45 last night in the Sun Ridge Road and Carissa Street area in Freeport. A 26-year-old male was stabbed. He died in transit to hospital in a private vehicle. And then shortly after midnight, a 27-year-old man was shot to death on Bruce Avenue, also in Freeport. These are the seventh and eighth murders on Grand Bahama for the year. Police are asking anyone with information on these two slings to come forward.